All right, let's talk about the proximity sensor on the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE. That phone is right here on the right. And on the left, I have a Samsung Galaxy Grand Prime. Um, phone type doesn't matter, but point of this video is comparing the differences between a virtual proximity sensor and a physical proximity sensor. Okay. Let's get started. So, most of most phones have a physical proximity sensor. So, on this phone here, it is uh, going to be. Let me zoom out a bit here. It's right up here where these two black circles are. Um, I'm not sure which one's which. Um, it's one of the two could be a, the proximity sensor, or they both could be a proximity sensor on this phone. All right, so the Galaxy S20 FE does not have such a sensor on the top. So the S20 FE has a does not have a physical sensor. However, the Galaxy S20 regular, uh, the S20 Plus, and the S20 Ultra those three phones do have a proximity sensor at the top. Okay. So if you have a proximity sensor on a phone, you will know that when you call someone and your face, um, the side of your face is close to the phone, it will shut the screen off. That is to prevent accidental touches from your face touching the screen. I can demonstrate that with the old phone here. So since this has a physical sensor in it, this is what should happen with a physical proximity sensor. I'm going to dial 611 and as a test call instead, so I don't want to call anybody else. This phone doesn't have a SIM card in it, this phone does. So that's also why I'm using 611 as a number and it has a, uh, well it has a SIM in it but it's not active. So that's why it'll keep trying to call 611. Oops. Okay. So once you're in a call, you will know that once your face or something gets close to the screen, it will shut the screen off. Just like that. All right. So that's what should happen when you hold your phone up. Let's say you're holding your phone up. This hand is my face or the side of my face holding up to your ear. Screen shuts off. That is to prevent external touches to the screen. All right, the call has failed because it's, it's not an active SIM card. All right, and then if, another way to test it is you go into the test screen, uh, go into star pound, zero star pound. It'll bring up a uh, diagnostic test that you can run. We'll go to sensor. And you get three sensors on this specific phone, accelerometer, proximity, and magnetic. We're interested in the proximity sensor. So right now it's zero, saying that there's nothing triggering the sensor. Put my hand in front of the screen. Phone turns, vibrates, and the phone screen turns green, and proximity turns to a 1.0. So this phone has a physical sensor. All right, physical sensors are very good because it pretty much 100% guarantees that the call screen when you're calling somebody is shuts off the screen. All right, now onto the virtual sensor. I'm gonna dial 611 again, and I'm gonna mute the microphone so the automated um, computer voice does not uh, react to me talking. All right, if I cover up the screen, nothing happens. All right, let's here's pretend my face is here. Cover it up, nothing happens. So when you're not even though your hand is close to the screen, nothing happens to 
disable the screen. Okay, so that means there is no physical sensor to sense distance from an object. All right, so how does this virtual sensor work? All right, I don't know the specifics of how Samsung programs the software and how it interacts with the hardware. In this case, it uses at least two pieces of hardware. It uses either the touch, the touch screen, possibly the camera, actually three, so three devices, hardware. Uh, the touch screen, possibly the front camera, and the third is the uh, gyro scope, the gyro sensors. So the gyro sensors detect that the phone, if it's flat on a surface, if it's being tilted at what angle. So basically, however you move your phone like this, th those sensors detect every angle that you are moving the phone. Okay, so now let's go into the testing diagnostic screen. Star pound, zero star pound. All right, so now we'll go into sensor. And you will see that this phone has one, two, three, four, five, five different sensors. A accelerometer, virtual sense, proximity sensor, gyroscope, magnetic, and fingerprint test. All right, we're interested in the proximity sensor, which is right up here. It says virtual proximity sensing. It's currently, the current state is release, mean, which means it's not triggered at the moment. Uh, from my testing, if you're on this testing screen, the only way to trigger it is if you touch the screen above the line where it says accelerometer sensor, so there's a that horizontal line. You have to touch the screen above that line and you cannot make a small surface area touching the screen. So what I mean by that is you can't just grab like your finger, you can't just touch the screen up there and expect it to trigger. It won't trigger it. You need a larger surface touching the screen. So I'm gonna use my thumb because it's a larger surface area. If I touch above that line, it triggers it. So you can see the screen turns green and the proximity sensor now says working. If I let go, this is what does there. So if I use my, like I said, my pointer finger, if I just touch it with the tip, it won't do anything. If I lay my finger flat, it will. So that's how you trigger the sensor in the diagnostic testing screen. All right, now earlier I, I mentioned that gyroscope sensor. This does come into play later on, in my opinion, um, during my testing. So the fact that you see all these numbers jumping around, it's the, you know, how far left, right, up, down, what angles you're holding the phone at. So I believe the software is looking at the touch screen, whether or not something is touching the screen, and also the angles of the gyroscope sensor. All right, uh, let's get out of this diagnostic test screen and let's make a phone call again. This time, knowing what we know, let's touch the screen. However, you will I will tell you right now that when you're on a phone call, it does not have to touch the top section like in the testing screen. As long as you're touching the screen above the line where the phone number is at or the caller name is at, it should work. However, it also takes into consideration the angles of the phone. If my phone is on a flat surface, it will not work. So why doesn't it work? It's because usually if you have your phone on the table, it's on speakerphone. Why is if your phone's on a table, it's not up against your face or anything, so it shouldn't trigger the sensor. So let's dial 611. Mute the mic. All right, now if I touch the screen with my thumb, above the customer care lo uh, name line, nothing happens, okay? So nothing happens on a flat surface. Now, let's pretend you're holding the phone against your ear. The phone doesn't care what, you know, if you're left-handed, right-handed, what angle you're holding it, as long as the 
and from my testing, as long as you're holding it basically like in this type of fashion, so it's basically instead of being flat, it's straight up and down. It doesn't care if it's at this angle, this angle, or whatever angle, as long as the phone is basically held upright. You will now notice the sensor works. So above the customer care line, here's my thumb, touch the screen, screen shuts off. For the screen to turn on again, you have to let go, or if the, the phone thinks you basically put your, your, you move your phone away from your head. So it's on, it's triggered right now, let go, let's move my the phone away from your head, screen turns on. All right, I'm gonna call customer care again, just for proof of concept here. Call. Hold phone against the ear, whatever it is. As long as you touch above the customer care or the phone number line with your ear, it can also just be a point. I'm just gonna point at it, it works as well. So the phone does not care if it's just a small point as long as the phone is held upright in a certain angle and you touch the screen above the customer care line, it'll work every time. All right, hopefully this video ex helps explain the differences between a physical proximity sensor versus a virtual one. Um, that should uh, answer a lot of uh, people's questions. If you guys have other questions, leave them down below in the comments.